Why is today so different? Some of you might still be thinking, well, this is interesting, Ryan. You know, I'm, I'm interested. I'm, you piqued my interest. But is today really different? And why is today different? Isn't, isn't every young generation just the young generation? And they're all lazy and entitled and what have you. Today is different. And I'll tell you why. Bottom line, millennials are a critical mass of change agents. So what is a critical mass? Critical mass, when you have a scale that's balanced, and you finally have enough of something that tips that scale, that's critical mass. Because millennials are the largest generation on the planet, they tip scales. Wherever they show up, they tip scales. But that does not make them unique. Because baby boomers, was a, your generation was a very large generation. All the baby boomers in the room, wherever you went, you tip scales. So that doesn't make millennials unique. What makes millennials unique is two things. And these two items are the greatest disruptors the world's ever seen. These two items are the greatest equalizer the world has ever seen. And it's impacted everyone in this room. These two items that I'm speaking of are technology and the internet. It's changed the game for all of us. We all live, work, and play very differently because of these two items. Our industries are shifting because of these two items. So you have these two the greatest disruptors the world has ever seen, and you place those two items on the shoulders of the largest generation on the planet, and that, my friends, is the recipe for massive disruption. That's the recipe that's, that's caused or created exponential times. Things are moving and shifting at exponential rates. So I want to unpack this idea of exponential times with you right now. I'm going to do so with a quick exercise. I want you to name an invention of the past, and we can go back as far as fire if you want to, okay? So just shout out an invention of the past. And I'm coming downstairs to get some of your responses. Just shout them out. Telephone? The wheel? Yes, patent number two right after fire, of course. What else? Steam engine. Here's what's really interesting. And for those that weren't playing, you could have said anything. And John shared a great, um, showed us some, some, some great clips of some of the inventions that have happened throughout the Industrial Revolutions. So you could have taken a cue from that and said some of those. But if you, had, if you didn't say one, you could have said anything in this room. You could have said jacket, shoes, belt, clothes, speakers, TV. All this stuff at one point was an invention. It's pretty incredible how far we've come as a human race. But here's what's interesting. All of the responses that I heard from this group, all of your responses and inventions that you shouted out were physical inventions. Telephone, post-it note, electricity. These are essentially physical inventions. You know, airplane, automobile, physical inventions. Because they were physical inventions, that limited the capacity in which they had to change our behaviors and to disrupt culture and to disrupt societies. Right? Take the automobile, for example. It took decade upon decade for that to be developed and then for it to ultimately change how we live, work, and play. It's taken a long time. But contrast those physical inventions with the inventions that are happening today. And the inventions that are happening today, a lot of them are happening in the cloud, in the digital world, in cyberspace. So things like software as a service, applications, Amazon, Netflix, these are essentially intangible inventions. And because they're intangible, they have exponential power to change you and I's behavior. They have exponential power to disrupt an industry in an instant. And let me give you a couple examples. Uh, I'm going to give you actually a whole list of examples, but one that's not on the list, which I find really interesting, is Netflix. Did you know that only 8% of U.S. college students don't have access to Netflix? Only 8% of U.S. college students don't have access to Netflix. Now, they're not all paying for it. We all know that, right? They use a mom and dad's or their roommate's username and password to get, some, get online and get some of their, their content. But only 8% don't. So that means 90, 92% of arguably one of the most um, targeted demographic, in, at least in the United States, has access to Netflix. Netflix only started streaming in 2007. And now they have 92% one of the most highly coveted market. That could only happen. That type of scale, that type of reach could have never happened in any other time in history than the exponential times that you and I live in. 
The smart device, the smartphones that you all have in your purse, pocket, or your hand, these devices are 100,000 times smaller and several billion, with a B, several billion times more powerful than a computer was in the early 1970s. We take these puppies for granted now, don't we? That's how fast our appetite and how fast we're adapting, but we're not quite sure, right? We, we can feel the ground moving underneath us. We can sense this disruption, but we can't quite put our finger on it, so hopefully some of these examples are helping you kind of pull it all together. No industry, no individual is immune to the disruption power of today's exponential times. And the millennial generation, the new generation, they are just one character in a much larger story.